David Cheung and T. Lung. You may have never heard of them, and that's cool. If you're a big action fan, at best, maybe you saw T. Lung as Chow Yun-Fat's brother in A Better Tomorrow, or you saw David Cheung as a minor character in Once Upon a Time in China 2. If I had not launched into watching every single Shaw Brothers action movie, I probably never would have noticed them either. But, you know, I'm obsessive. Yet here we are. These two guys have had a lot to do with the DNA of modern movies. Chiang always plays a scamp. He's a smiling playboy who skips through life until his back gets pushed up against the wall. T. Lung is a wuxia hero of the old style. He's a Hong Kong John Wayne, watching the Wild West, or in his case, the Jiang Hu, shrivel under ruthless warlords and petty criminals. This is obviously the way that buddy cop movies work. Riggs and Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon are the gold standard. One is ready to die at any moment, and the other is too old for this shit. And he's on the verge of retirement. In both cases, it's coded language for, I'd really like to keep living. Riggs lives isolated in his trailer with a dog, and Murtaugh lives in a series of suburban homes with his wife and kids. And that is Chiang and T. The absurdly named Have Sword Will Travel pits them against each other. Chiang is the sexy loner, T is the family man whose marriage is threatened by Chiang's arrival. Vengeance is probably their best movie, even though they never have screen time together. But the roles are still there. T Lung is a good good guy murdered by the system. Chiang is the maniac with a death wish who takes the system down. In The Pirate, T. Lung is a pirate, and David Chiang is the rebellious magistrate who's trying to figure out if T. Lung is more dangerous to Hong Kong than his enemies. You see the formula over and over and over again, and it's always fun. They show up in more than 20 movies together, mostly directed by Chang Che, giving the trio the nickname of the Iron Triangle back in the early 70s. By the time Chang Che made his star-studded Shaolin Temple, T and Chiang essentially show up in the background alongside Wei Hua, they don't really do anything. Their presence means that the old guard is here and they've got your back. They've turned into Yoda. Chiang usually dies heroically to absolve his ne'er-do-well crimes. He dies for Tilung nine times over the course of their career, as opposed to Tilung, who only dies for Chiang twice, dying while holding hands three times. Buddy cop movies have been a Hollywood staple since the 80s. Before that, we had buddy gangster movies like Butch and Sundance or The Frisco Kid, but the Hollywood buddy cop movie really came into its own with Lethal Weapon, being the best of the best, but also running Scared, 48 Hours, Red Heat, Midnight Run, and so on. In the 90s, this got expanded with the early Michael Bay stuff, you know, Bad Boys and The Rock, and then it became High Camp with Rush Hour, or it became super respectable with L.A. Confidential, and today it's become self-parody with movies like The Nice Guys, The Other Guys, Zootopia. Now, L.A. Confidential has always been on my bad side, and that's ironic since I love any movie set in Los Angeles, but it seemed to me when it came out to be a naked ripoff of John Woo's early movies. Hard Boiled, The Killer, Better Tomorrow, where there's two guys who have nothing in common and end up coming together in a bloodbath finale against the real bad guys after hating each other for the first 90 minutes. But John Woo was essentially reproducing the movies of his own mentor, Chang Che. LA Confidential is John Woo, who is Chang Che, who is Hope and Crosby, who are Abbott and Costello, who are every old vaudeville team. You get the picture. There's really nothing new under the sun. And let's be honest, it, it goes a lot deeper than that. The finale of Hard Boiled is basically just a prolonged reference to Romance of the Three Kingdoms from several hundred years ago, where Chao Yun saves the son of Liu Bei during the Battle of Changban. And then John Wu later got to refilm that for 2008's Red Cliff. And if you watch Ringo Lamb's City on Fire and Tarantino's Red Reservoir Dogs back to back, which rips it off, and you can somehow tell me that you think City on Fire is a better movie, I'll buy you a beer and sit down to discuss at length. Fair game with The Departed versus Infernal Affairs. I mean, I like the Hong Kong version better there, but I'm not going to waste your time pretending that my opinion's better than yours. The point is, when you fall in love with a thing, its ancestors are precious to you, but its descendants are rejected little bastard children. So, what's a buddy cop film? Why does it work? Why do I get pumped up every time I see that David Chiang and T. Lung are going to be in a movie? Especially when directed by Chang Che and written by Yi Kuang? Well, there's the basic formula. Two guys are forced to work together. They hate it, but each of them needs something that the other one can give to their life. Riggs and Murtaugh. Riggs needs a family. Murtaugh needs a reason to keep working. 
And this is made very explicit in Bad Boys, where Martin Lawrence and Will Smith actually swap roles in a Freaky Friday type situation. Will Smith snuggles into the domestic lifestyle, while Martin Lawrence gets deeply confused about why he doesn't just have a booty call. All of this is kind of the B story. Buddy cop movies rely on having two plots. There's the A story about getting the bad guys, there's the B story, which essentially is a love story between two dudes. But even when they gender swap and one of the dudes isn't a dude, say it's Sandra Bullock or a bunny, the fascinating thing is that the homoerotic subtext remains subtextual, unlike Chong Che's later movies where, you know. But there is no chance that Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde are going to hook up. Because that's the rule. And why is that the rule? Well, buddy cop movies are largely about figuring out how to say, I love you, man. You find a yin to your yang, and maybe it's annoying, but you know that they complete you, and you can't express it. So, you find a suitable super young fest outlet, like hunting down bad guys and shooting up the joint, in order to be able to bond. I mean, geez, Riggs even does that kinky scissoring move they make chicks do in action movies to get out of his darkest hour. Uh, yeah. Chang Che, who was super sexist despite being a great director, said that he saw David Chiang as being both the hero and heroine at the same time. Now, I'm not going to argue about that. It's not really any of my business. But I will argue against Chang's assumption that being yin makes you partially female. Because if there's one thing David Chiang was, he was a horny male dude. But I do think there's some telling in Chang Che's limited chauvinistic 70s assessment of what David Chiang represents. He has the dull glimmer of getting the idea that sexuality is a spectrum. You're not either a he-man or a girly man, and if your cop partner is Judy Hopps, you don't have to sleep with her. Sometimes your perfect partner has nothing to do with sexuality or gender or anything. Maybe you just work well together. I mean, look at Tuco and Blondie and Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, or Eastwood and Van Cleef and A Few Dollars More. Get over your hang-ups. He doesn't want to kiss you. However, there's a lot to be said for partnership. When the Iron Triangle finally broke up, Chong Che and Ti Lung both found new avenues for success. Chong did the Venom's Mob movies and the Fu Sheng Shaolin movies. Ti did a series of Gu Long adaptations with Chori Wen, and those are really fun. I mean, they've, they've got booby-trapped caves, cannibal grandmothers, giant chessboards. And he paired up with Alexander Fu Sheng in Avenging Eagle, Deadly Breaking Sword, Return of the Sentimental Swordsman. And in all these movies, he manages to elevate Fu Sheng's goofy antics into a serious drama. Same goes for his role with Wang Yu in The Kung Fu Instructor. Meanwhile, David Chiang floundered. He plays an unconvincing monk in Shaolin Abbot. You keep on wondering if he's going to give in to temptation and just make out with Lily Li, but then he never does. So a straight man without a comic foil may get along okay, but a comic without a straight man? Mm, I don't think so. Unless you're into Ben Stiller or Adam Sandler movies where the love interest is forced to play the straight man. And essentially, that's just a tragedy that demands you laugh when nothing's funny. And his comeback role in Once Upon a Time in China 2 doesn't work as well as T. Lung in Better Tomorrow. It's right there in the title. T. Lung is still playing the weary old school guy, Murtaugh, who's a little disappointed with the way the kids are today. David Chiang plays an aging bureaucrat. He's conflicted about which side to be on, and that may speak to aging bureaucrats who made Once Upon a Time in China too. but to most of the young people in the audience, they're saying, who's that old guy? Why should we care? Yet, a few years ago, I loaned a friend of mine all the Shaw Brothers movies based on the Chinese classic Shui Hu, Water Margin. My friend's immediate comment was, who's that guy playing Yan Qing? Because David Chiang was nothing if not a bomb of chemistry. Long story short, if you like action movies, you've already seen Lethal Weapon, Predator, Aliens, Die Hard, eh, you need to see those early John Woo flicks. Hard Boiled and The Killer, at least. And then, you should go back and see at least Vengeance. I hope you get the bug and end up watching every Chiang T movie like I did. But if not, you'll at least know who Griggs and Murtaugh's grandparents were. <laughs>